accountable. That's a good, good thing. You know, and it requires public vigilance. And I think once you get the information out there and, and the citizens have their hands on it, that public vigilance comes from all sorts of places. It can come from the press, from advocacy and watchdog groups, and from voters. And you know what? It ought to come from us, too. It's, um, you know, this whole, this whole idea of um, these transparency websites, you know, it's one of those things that as politicians we say, okay, done, check mark, we got that taken care of. But that's not how it actually works. You know, you can't just pass a bill and get this thing done. You know, um, it, it takes a heck of a lot more than that, whether it's Hawaii or whether it's Minnesota or whether it's another, uh, another state. Passing that bill and getting it done and used effectively is uh, are very different. Lack of priority. Uh, Minnesota passed our first uh, Transparency Act actually in 2007. Um, 2008 clicked by, no transparency. The days continued to go by, no transparency. Now in March of 2009, we had this uh, bold new transparency plan come forward. Um, one of the challenges that we were told was in, in the beginning was that um, we had an old computer system that was not, quote, internet friendly. Really. <laughs> really. In 2007, in Minnesota, we had internet friendly or non-internet friendly computers in our state. Well, I can guarantee you the way we spend money, that is absolutely incorrect. Um, and uh, we, we proved that. But, uh, but amazingly, when, when the issue was finally prioritized, when it was driven to the level where it became a priority like that, our computers became internet friendly. It's amazing how that occurs. You know, one of the other ways, and I think uh, it was indicated uh, as well in Colorado, is that, you know, it's one of the state places where the bureaucracy says, show me the money. Show me the money. Give us the dollars and we will implement what you guys want. You policymakers with these brilliant ideas, give us the money and we'll get it done. Well, it's amazing. Minnesota's transparency project was scored at a million to a million and a half dollars. A million to a million and a half dollars is what they put uh, on, on the uh, uh, fiscal note. Um, you know what they got it done for? $5,000 <laughs> in the end. That's what it cost. And by the way, $5,000 paid for an outside consultant to come in and implement this project that the legislators and the policymakers came up with. So, you know, these numbers are all movable. They're all creative, you know, creative accounting, fuzzy math, you know, it all works in different ways. $5,000 is what we ended up with. Um, when we did pass it, and the reason we were able to get beyond the fiscal note in the end, or in the beginning, was um, we actually passed the bill in 2007 and said in the language of the legislation, the department will absorb the costs within their agency budget. So what, fiscal note or not, it didn't matter because we essentially forced it down their throats by putting it in their agency budget, and amazingly, it cost $5,000. So, it, it, you know, creativity and um, prudence uh, comes from pressure, and uh, sometimes the bureaucracy just needs to be able to see things a new way through a new opportunity, and forcing it down their throats sometimes does that. So one of the other things that I would uh, suggest is um, barriers is bad data, computer glitches, and I think one of the barriers that I see in this is not necessarily a barrier into getting it done, but this is a barrier that creates cynicism outside of the public realm, outside of the politicians, and bleeds into the citizenship. Or into the citizens. You know, when you see websites that are poorly done, when you see websites that uh, give us bad information, like has been done on the federal level, um, that cynicism and that um, disgust for government just absolutely exponentially grows. And so I think you've got to be very careful that incorrect information does not get out there uh, because it's going to, in my view, it's going to be worse than having no information out there as well. For example, I announced the other day that I was running for Minnesota's new congressional district, double zero. And then I was going to announce maybe after that that I was going to run for the new 57th congressional district in Minnesota because 35 jobs were saved and created by the stimulus dollars, which were $404,340. But then I thought, gosh, you know, there's a better story out there because in Minnesota's 27th congressional district, you know what? 
2.5 jobs were created with over $3 million. This is what the stimulus website said. Well, guess what, guys? Minnesota has eight congressional districts. We don't have a 57th. We don't have a double zero. We don't have a 27th. If we did, we'd all be congressmen. And we don't want that. So this is just a great example of how uh, a bad website, bad information, creates public cynicism and fear of incompetent policymakers, which is what we're seeing right now. So with that, I just, uh, you know, as the folks are struggling to stay in their homes and to provide those jobs and things along those lines, they're probably not thinking about transparency, but I can guarantee you that they will be frustrated with some of the spending that's going on in our communities and in our legislatures, in our state, and in our federal government. So you need to show it to them. You need to show them what's going on. You need to show them that $6,000 was spent for a 16-stage video installation showing the imaginative narratives for a northeast Minneapolis neighborhood. You need to show them that there's $5,000 being spent in your state for a documentary film talking about nails in trees. You need to show them what's going on in your legislatures and where their hard-earned taxpayer dollars are going. It's incumbent upon us. It's our responsibility. And we need to tell the right story, communicate the right message, and do it in a way that actually wins people over, gets them to participate, and makes this thing work. So thanks so much.